Hello there and welcome once again. If you're returning, thank you for coming back. If you're new here, you're most welcome to join me on my artistic journey on YouTube. Um, I've been on my artistic journey for over 20 years, was probably most of my life in some ways. Um, but it's only recently I thought I it might be a nice idea to share the style of art that I do examples of how I draw and colour and things like that um, in the hope of inspiring others or just for interest and relaxation really. I mean there's all different reasons why all of us watch YouTube videos um, in, in lots of different ways. But as it's Friday, it's the 30th of July so we're nearly at the end of July, um, I thought I'd just have a flip through of the sketchbook I'm working in at the moment because I have finished drawing some things and um, and I want then to do perhaps adding colour to one because I'm humming and hawing about adding colour to some of them because I don't want to mess them up and I really need to scan, either scan them first or come to the acceptance that I don't like the colour I can always scan them in redraw them and so on it's a bit of a potch but it's doable this is the first one I've shown this one before don't think I've done anything to this one since I showed you last. Um, I'm surprisingly happy with the colour that's been added. And I say surprisingly happy because at one point I was thinking, what on earth was I thinking? But um, what I also like is adding biro pen to add shadow. Either before I add the colour or afterwards. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference which way round I do it with the Ecoline inks. That one. I'm not doing anything more with that one. I don't think I can do it the stay as it is. This is the one that I'm sort of tempted to add colour to, but still don't want to. Because I don't want to mess it up, because I'm really, really quite happy with this. <laughs> quite pleased. I'm never ecstatic about things or overly gushy, but I am. It, it's, it's good. It's good enough, if nothing else. So I'm quite happy with that one. This one too, it's it's on its nose. Um, this one I finished drawing and I have started to add shading with the biro. I haven't finished it, but whether I finish it before adding colour, it doesn't make any difference. I just have to decide whether I want to risk adding colour. This was the one I started, was it at the beginning of this week? I think it was, or at the weekend, can't remember when. It's now complete and I've added all the shading to it that I want to and I do like the way that Biro can add a greyer tone for the shadows and how easy it is to fade it out. It's quite different to using say an alcohol marker which is just one colour you have to layer them or something like um, a, a Sakura Micron or a Unipin pen which you can't get any difference in colour, you might get a slight difference in the thickness of line. Same with the Tombos, though I do have one that is grey. I do have a grey one, but the line will be a lot thicker than this fine point biro. So, you know, it's working. You, you can get grey. I've got pale grey unipins. But again, it's that constant thickness of line. It's hard to change it because if you try to change it, you know, I wreck the nib because I go from head heavy-handed to more heavy-handed rather than for extremely light-handed to not. But oddly with a biro I can be light-handed. Isn't that strange? I don't know what that's about. Um, this is one that I've been drawing over the last couple of days. Um, I don't think I've shown this one or if I have it's only the very start of it. But it's, it's unusual and a bit different and I've had started adding shading to it, but I do feel I need to add some colour to it. And this one I've done this morning whilst just coming around and um, thinking about stuff, not consciously in words, but just letting things wander through my head um, to work out where I'm going. Because I've got some decisions, I've got some decisions to make, I think, to do with... Um, YouTube and blogging and so on and um, perhaps looking at rather than doing things daily 
um, on YouTube anyway is having a look at perhaps doing something like this at the end of a week of flip through. Um, and perhaps, you know, Template Thursday is a, is a set time in my week. So perhaps on a Wednesday doing a time lapse of drawing and on a Thursday maybe the colouring or not. Um, or one other day, but I haven't worked it out yet. So if you've got any suggestions or anything particular, just put a comment um, down below and um, your suggestions will be gratefully received and um, or sort of like yes up or even yes is you're, you're thinking right or no I like it every I like to see something every day or whatever it may be okay um, so my head is is sort of like wandering around just getting my glasses so I can see what I'm doing so I'm going to add color to this one it's one that it's okay but I'm not just so fussed on this one so I'm, I'm happy to add colour to it. The others I like a lot as they are and I'm not so keen to add colour so I'm going to take the, see what happens here. And I've chosen my colours already. I'm going to use the Ecoline um, pens. I'm going to use indigo because I like indigo. I do, I don't know why but I like indigo. And I've got Prussian blue as a variation on blue. It's a, pet, you know, it's a brighter colour, more vibrant colour. And then I've chosen gold ochre which is this one here and burnt sienna which is this one over here so oranges and yellows and blues complementary colours am I heading to a disaster with these Ooh, I have no idea but it's going to be an interesting and fun journey I've dug out just a piece of um, acetate here it's actually a, a plate from my um, a stamping plate from my days of experimenting with um, rubber stamps, you know, for making cards or whatever. Back in the day, you know, several years ago, I actually designed sets um, for Hampton Arts. Though these stamps were put for some bizarre reason in shops next to colouring books because I was known as a colouring book artist rather than with the rubber stamps, so a lot of people never found them who perhaps would have liked them, so they didn't do as well as they'd hoped. Still did okay, mind you, but... So I had to dally with that, and... Um, sorry for the squeaking. It is what it is, there's nothing I can do about it, it's what... Oh, that's better, if I tap it down and press, more ink comes out. Oh, fantastic, remember that one? Better than scribbling away like a crazy woman. Okie dokes. So, I'm just going to see what I can do here. I've got my tissue ready. So I've just already added piles of water here. And that's what I really want to do because I want to have puddles of this. Some in less intense than others. Still really intense, mind you, even when I add lots of water to it. But um, we'll see how it goes. It's a lovely thing about this, if I use just a barely damp brush, don't damage the paper much and I can always go back and add more later on, which is lovely, I can deepen the colours. This one I'd rather like, a touch of yellow in there, just to see how The last couple of days have really been me focusing on the colouring template really for this week. Um, they do take me quite a while to do every week and um, I love doing them, I'm not moaning and I think it's lovely to give back to people who support my work um, by buying books and so on and um, other people may not agree, but the fact I do a template a week doesn't seem to stop them from purchasing books, which is lovely. Because uh, I guess it depends how avid a colourist you are, how many templates and books you get through in a week. So there's been that. Um, I think I said the last time I spoke I was hoping to go out for a walk. I didn't make it. 
Um, I'm just so, so tired. I did actually need to return to bed for a little bit, which makes me sound ever so lazy, but when I don't sleep well at night, this happens. And um, I know if I stay awake, I just won't get anything done at all. So it's better for me to take an hour or two to have that nap and come back to the work I want to do um, with plenty of energy and a, a renewed enthusiasm, as it were. It's one thing I've learnt, um, and it's not been an easy lesson for me, is that it's okay to listen to what my body needs. And if my body and my mind are tired and I need that sleep, then it's okay to take it. I've learned that if, you know, pushing through and getting things done um, was something that I always used to do, I suppose. Well, I did. So I was always a bit of a workaholic, a per 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 perfectionist. Um, and I would just keep going and going and going until I'd exhausted myself. And um, I no longer had that pressure that was on me, the added pressure of teaching, of the, you know, the teaching environment where um, it's a constant, well, it's a hamster wheel, you're on a giant human-sized hamster wheel um, from the time you get in in the morning to the time you leave at night. And I was there often an hour, hour and a half before the day even started officially with the morning briefing. And I'd often be there for two two hours or so, two, three hours actually, after the school day had finished. Sometimes there'd be meetings, but sometimes I'd be there just trying to catch up with everything that was required of me that I, I just couldn't get done. And I knew if I took it home, my bag would sit there by the door until I got up the next morning and went back into school. So it was better for me to stay there than to come home and crash and burn. Whereas really all I was doing was burning myself out. So this is something that I have learned over the years with a lot of help from um, therapists along the way is to be easier on myself and kinder with myself and to give myself the time and space that I need to look after myself, to be healthy, to have the energy I need to enjoy life and to do things. Um, and to set realistic goals. So when it comes, for example, to doing um, colouring books, I, I may set myself a goal of one or two templates, two templates a day, say, because I always leave it too late to start the project, really, for one template a day. But two templates, knowing that if I get one done, then the next day I may be able, to, I may be in a better shape to get three done, and so on. So it, you know, it's all swings and roundabouts, but it's about making sure that I, I have enough time to allow me to do these things. Um, and it really, it, it's such a hard lesson, and it was something that it took me so long to do. You know, I'm in my fifties now, and it's only the last few years in my 50s really that I have learned how to do this how to take care of myself in this kind of way and uh, I do wish it was taught in schools in the home that it you know and a recognition that we all need this quiet time, this downtime, this ability to say, I can't do any more now. I will have a break. I will do what I need to allow me to complete this. And then it's having that perseverance to go back and complete the work. When you've done what you need to look after yourself. So I'm, I'm very aware of that. Mind you, I can work on art, personal art, just about all day. Um, I can lose myself in it, which 
on the face of it seems a good thing but on the, <laughs> the rest of it other things don't get done or I put off doing other things that would be good for me like going out for a walk which I may very well do this afternoon I think the rain stopped so we had quite strong winds and rain overnight the sun's out but it's still relatively cool so it'd be a really good idea for me to to do that thing that is called going out and having some fresh air and enjoying my myself in that way surprising how intense the colours of these can be um, and how much I can vary the intensity. I do like these pens though, they really, they just suit me. Of course I can go back with more pigments to the ones I've done and darken the same area so they sort of like, they look like they belong together. So I'm going to try mixing these colours to see what kinds of greens I get with, um, certainly with this gold ochre, because uh, that could be an interesting way of getting green into this picture for some of the foliage and so on. My intention is to stick to this limited palette of four colours, but I may end up adding some you know another colour or two into the palette just to mix things up a little bit because um, I don't know I shall see it's, you know it's I do my best I think with colour when I choose such a limited set of colours and um, And it's when I try to do too much with colour that I get into a right pickle, often. I think it does depend what I'm doing. I mean, you know, the more whimsical artwork with the cute monsters, the jewel world style stuff, then it doesn't matter really. But when, when I'm working on something that I perhaps want to feel a bit more coherent in some way, though all those colours are coherent, but they're coherent within the context of the theme of you know the theme and the feel of the artwork um, then I think for myself a lim more limited palette is definitely the way to go Sure. But that is just my kind of perspective on things. And as I'm looking, I'm looking at all of these little bits stranding over here, so I'm gonna to have to be careful what colour or colours I use for these um weird CD shapes behind. I say seed, C D seed like, because you know they're not really seed like, but And I can see here, as I'm adding the colour, how using um, the biro to add shading would really help so that all I'm doing is adding a wash of colour. So I'm not, you know, so it's not so important to get the shading with the colour, I'll do that with the biro. But perhaps I'll add the colour first and then decide what I do next because there are options for intensifying colour I could go 
go back with this and use the use these in layers which is always well, it's always possible and it's always a thing i can do or i could dig out some colored pencils or um, other media to use not quite sure how alcohol inks alcohol markers would work on the top I don't mind using alcohol markers, but they, they're not necessarily my favourite medium. I rarely ever use them or reach for them. If you give me a choice between alcohol markers or scanning a drawing in and colouring it digitally, it will always be scanning in and colouring it digitally. I just find it so easier then to blend colours and to get the the gradation of colours that I like, and those in, the intensities as well, the intensity of um, contrast. Yeah, that's yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That's fair enough. Good enough description. I'm thinking, what am I talking about here? But I know what I want though, because I do like high contrast to get shadow and highlighting. And of course, here I'm talking about adding sh shadow with a ballpoint pen. But of course, I can add highlights with white gel pens as well. I, I was beginning, when I started this, I was thinking, what on earth am I doing here? What is going through my little mind? As I thought, why am I adding colour? But now I've done some, I'm actually feeling more confident that colour is the way to go with these. And I think the more or less flattish wash of colour is certainly easier for me to handle with traditional media than um, there's a bit of boo boo over there. It's barely noticeable now. Um, easier for me you know for me to cope with um, wet media by using just that kind of simple wash and then looking for highlight and shadow with the ballpoint pen and that's what I may do once I've completed adding this indigo to these checking on the time now about 20 minutes in I don't want to make this like a two hour long video because I think I'd bore myself stupid quite easily but um, so I've got this indigo done and the little separating bits here, or not, so it's not that important. But um, the little bands around these CD things, CD pod like things, then perhaps I will just have a go with. Um, Biro and a white gel pen and see how that will look. I think this, this is, I have, you know, um, this particular drawing I did say is more for me to try this out and see how I feel more than a finished work of art. So I may get so far with colouring like I did with the one earlier on and I may decide, yep, yeah, I've done what I need, I've got an example, I'm learning from what I'm doing, it's good reference for me and, and that's fine and that's okay to do, That's to me that's what sketchbooks are about, um, as well as having you know finished drawings in that are good enough to scan in or to um, to work on digitally or to replicate in some way they're also a place to experiment and to try things out and to to learn uh, from mistakes as much as from getting things right or if not more so I'd say mistakes it's not really a mistake it's sort of like let's see what happens oh I don't like that <laughs> and um, that's okay okay let's try mixing some of these colours. Going to need some more of the um, gold ochre here. I'm, I'm mixing gold ochre with the Prussian blue and seeing what kind of colour I get. 
So of course I need to be careful here, but I do get, oh actually I get a really nice green. I do need some more of this gold ochre. That's really nice. I think I'm going to have to try to remember at the end of the video to put put some samples of these of this mixed colour down and say how I made it, what colours I used, so I can always go back in the future. I may have to start some swatch charts for colours, colour mixing, and it's not a bright green by any long shot but it kind of tones in with the other colours which it would do because it's made from them though I haven't used the Prussian blue yet but it does bring it does add that different bit of colour I am going to go over those little white bits those bits in the middle here and I'll do the same on the bottom ones because I'll I just probably want to make them a darker version of this colour. So if I start with it to begin with, then it's easier to darken. So they look like little dimples. At the moment they look like they're standing out, don't they? The highlights, so we'll see. It's actually worked nicely. Pitokes. So I need to get some colour here for the um, those bands. I think it may be a case of mixing some burnt sienna and some of the um, golden ochre. Tell you what, the lids on these really do go on firmly, which is fabulous. Okay, so I've put puddles down next to each other so I can just mix it on there. I'll add plenty of water because I don't want it dark, dark. Perhaps I do, I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. That should be okay. Let's see what these... I think this would be nice on the... Um, yeah, this would be nice on the, um, the indigos sections but I think on the golden ochre section I'll use indigo there I think also the nice thing about adding wash is you have to work quite quickly and that means that um, I don't have to fuss about trying to get graduations of colour which means that this is quite a fast process in some ways perhaps too fast I'm going but I'm happy with how things are turning out at the moment oh gosh wrong one it's okay it'll be fine If, they, if there's a variation of colour in them from different areas, well, there are seed pods. And that means that we do have variation in nature, don't we? So I'm going to use the, that. I think I might add some Prussian blue to some of the indigo as well. I'm never going to remember these mixtures myself. Let's have a look. Not sure if that's distinctly enough a distinct enough colour. May need a little bit more of the Prussian blue. As I'm going so fast, I'm not staying in the areas, so some of my colour is spreading out. Though some of these areas are really tiny in defence of myself.
I do quite like the way the colours alternate next to one another. There's a kind of regularity in it which makes me quite happy, I think. Though these colours are quite earthy toned and quite vintage and muted, I rather like them. Even though part of me is going, I wish I'd chosen brighter colours. Part of me is going, no, I like these ones. And I do, I like rusty, rusty kind of colours together. Um, and indigos and sort of rust, rusty colours, rusty reds, rusty browns. Hopefully that won't be too too much of a difference there in that one where I managed to put the indigo in the wrong place. I think it'll be okay as it dries. But by the time I've added the um, biro and gel pen, you won't notice the difference, will we? There we go. Okay, the last thing I wanted to do was to pick up some more of this. And some more of that Prussian blue mix them to make a darker colour to just to go back into these okay. so again hopefully these are tiny but they're not so tiny that I won't be able to get um, a fine biro in add some shadow because I do want them to look like they're dimple, dim, dimples or little holes into the inside of them. So there we go, that's that's that. Okie dokes, let me have a look because I need my, I do have the black biro and I've got, I've got a white, there we are. Uh, so yeah, the souffle pen will be fine. I won't go rattling through my collection of pens looking for a, a white to secure a gel roll. Let me just have a look and see how this works. Just starting my pen up on the um, I don't like work moving my hand that way. I'm learning what is the best way for my hand to work so I can get really, really um, to use a really, really light hand so I can get really, really fine lines. Just enough just to add some shadow. I'm being mindful of keeping the direction of these lines sympathetic with how I want the curvature of this to appear. So I'm keeping these lines sort of like, you can see the, the arc of the blue bands. I'm kind of keeping these lines parallel to them. I'm varying that angle in between, like where there's a big curve. Here they're fairly straight, so it's easy, but where there's a big curve, it's, you have to vary those angles around the curve. As I'm looking at this part of me thinks I could have done with a more intense colour here so, so this black fades into the background but again that's something that I can adjust fairly easily going forward. Just have a look. Get this one done. Of course I could use a different colour gel pen but I only have very fine points in um, black, blue, green and red. I'm going to have to hunt around for fine points in other colours perhaps. Because it is the fine... The fineness of this pen that makes it such a 
ideal. And pen to use for this. So using the light, a light hand, the lighter I can use it, my hand, the more variation and shade I can get in the, in the, I mean here it's ridiculous, it's such a tiny bit, it doesn't matter what size pen I used, I find it hard to get shadow in perhaps. The other thing I noticed about using a biro for this is the longer I can go before having to wipe the point off, the lighter the ink comes as the, the ink dries on the ball and it means that less ink seems to come off. I could be wrong, it could be just that I'm working out without thinking about it how um, How light-handed I need to be. I'm making those adjustments. Another very good reason to do warm-up art before I take my hand to anything. That I'd want to be finished and complete and ready to be put out there. I don't know. Let's have a look. Because this here we need some as well. I'm very aware that I'll want shadow around these as well. Just inside them. Maybe that I'll just add those in a different manner. I'm also being conscious that I'll want highlights on some side. These. I'm just trying to keep the Direction of shadows consistent here, sort of. I, I don't know if I'm making any sense at all because I find it so difficult to actually describe in words what I'm doing. better way. It's a bit messy there though. I'm not sure if you can see if you can see any difference. I don't know is the honest answer whether you can or not. So I'm just going to get this white gel pen working. Just give it a clean and a lib. This is a souffle so it's not going to show up instantly. And the number of dots I can actually get in going to be quite limited in some areas because this is really some of these are really tiny spaces I've got to work in. There we go. Now the thing about the souffle is that it dries opaque but it goes on fairly clear. So it'll take a little while to, to dry for the whiteness to show up. And I've also noticed that obviously, you know, because I'm putting these dots onto a water soluble colouring medium, the dots seem to pick up some of that colour, which actually works to my advantage in some ways because it gives me a paler version of the underlying colour. If I thought I could have put these on prior to adding colour, and then they would remain as white spaces where the colour is. Um, 
not quite how is that working i find it incredibly difficult to see how things work and i often have to take a big break and come back with fresh eyes to see the effect that i've achieved so So I'm going to leave that there. It's, I think, yeah, the, you can see the white dots are beginning to um, are beginning to show as it dries. You can see. I think my pen work with the biro is a bit scruffy there, so I may have to rethink what I do or use the biro first. It's always possible, you know. That may be the better way. I don't know. Um, or I have to start mixing colours more and, and using them that way. I'd prefer to, in some ways, I think I'd prefer just the flat colour wash with the black line art than adding that dimension to it because that seems to work nicely enough. But anyway, it's um, I'm up to uh, 40 minutes. Done what I wanted to do this morning, the flip through and a bit of colouring and talking my way through that. Um, I do like that flatness of colour, but the, the variation in the different sections is interesting as well. So that's something for me to keep thinking about going forward. So thank you for joining me. hope you've enjoyed this. There won't be a time lapse of this one because I've talked through it and it's all basically art, more or less. So whatever you do, please look after yourselves. Take care of yourselves and please find time to be creative in your day no matter what that creativity is for you, I think it's important. And be kind to yourselves as well. Take care now. Bye-bye.